This is the House of Hockey podcast, where we talk about the game and the lifestyle. We've got opinions as hockey fans, friends, and from the female perspective. Welcome to our house. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast. This is episode 189. I'm one of your hosts, Ray Ray. Breezy is forever on the long-term injured reserved, and I am joined by a recurring guest co-host, Andy Zilch, friend of the podcast, freelance play-by-play broadcaster, specifying in all of the hockeys. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Is that the official ruling uh, on on Breezy? She's done for the rest of the the season? Yes, I, I... She's got a new gig. Um, I tried to FaceTime her when I was at the uh, PWHL final to see if she wanted any gear and um, she didn't answer. And she was like, normally she would like answer at her. She could answer for the most part at her other job, like for a minute. And if I'm FaceTiming, it must be something important. Like what kind of gear do you want from the PWHL final? Um, and she's like, I'm at work. I can't answer. And I'm uh, like, what do you want? Then I sent a picture. And so, yeah. But that's well, what's it, it enlighten me about how it was. Can we get You in? mean you didn't listen to the last episode, I, Andy? I did not. I did not. No. Hey, I was <laughs> south of the border. I was in Mexico. Okay. Yeah. And they don't have internet there. So they don't. I, I know. It's a, it's. A, Dirt Smiles. roads and margaritas and burritos, Wine. but no internet. No internet. What's, how is that possible? I know, right? The PWHL final was unreal. Like, yeah, being able to be a witness to history and watch where this is going to go. Like, I'm going to be able to be that 80 year old woman, hopefully. Maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe I won't want to be 80 and be like, I was there at the first ever Walter Cup when they raised it on the ice. I was just a young lash, you know, like. I hope you don't talk like that. No, I don't. No. Uh, Well, you know what? When you're 80, you could do whatever the fuck you want, you know, so maybe I will. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, it was it was amazing to see and to see the all of the minnesota families i think the hardest part of it for the league and of course like for any team who's winning a championship is winning on the road like it's just not the same when you win in your home barn and like they almost won game four at home in front of thirteen thousand fans and then to be in boston and win in front of like maybe a hundred fans you know or because it's just not you know, there yet. I mean, Minnesota fans traveled, so maybe like a thousand people, but it's quite the difference, different experience. But to see yeah. Kendall Coyne Schofield lift the cup, being that she is one of the main people player wise who brought this league to fruition and made this happen. And like, she's the one who went to Billie Jean King and was like, Hey, could you give me some advice on like how to make this league work and be great? And Billy's like, well, actually uh, here's a bunch of money and let's do it. And so <laughs> here's the league and for Kendall to be able to hoist the cup and to be such a household name, at least in this yeah. last decade and people know who she is and she's a U.S. legend and to see her, you know do it and she's a mom too i thought her son was like six months because i don't know anything about like children's ages he's like almost a year now i think i was like watching this like i was like oh he wasn't six months old he's like closer to a year you know um but i got to meet her husband i i costed him just like i costed a bunch of people while i was there i was like hi i'm rachel I love your podcast, sir. Hi, are you Kendall Coyne? Are you Kendall's husband? I love her. Thanks for supporting her. Like what she's doing is amazing. And everybody was, you know, happy to talk to me. But I talked to um, Tessa Bonome. She's a TSN reporter, I think, or one of those. And I yelled at her. She was like, she finished her broadcast and the game started and I knew she was off air. And I was like, Tessa, I love the podcast. And she's like, Hey, and she like came over and was talking to me and she was so nice. 
Um, she's the really the only one doing a PWHL based podcast and that, that has actual financial backing. And she was a professional player. She played at the Ohio state. She'll tell you that till she's blue in the face as anybody who played at the Ohio state will in any sport or who even went there for school. Um, so yeah, it was unreal. I had a great time. It was so cool to see the trophy come out, the Walter Cup, and they keep it in a Tiffany blue box, Andy. Oh. Because Tiffany designed it. Yeah, that's right. I it. remember that. Yeah. I don't know if you know anything about the Tiffany blue boxes. I know you've got a sister, but like it's a big deal, you know. <laughs> so um, to keep the trophy in a Tiffany blue box is like just did, perfect. Did they handle it with white gloves? Yes, they did. All Hall, right. Hockey Hall of Fame. All right. They had a female... Uh, and a male bring out the trophy. And I was like, oh, this is the Hockey Hall of Fame. Like, this is, they're, they're taking this real serious. Like, this Good. is legit. Yeah. Any other I questions thought. about it? Um, was, was the play what you expected? Like the skill or the excitement? Just on like uh, both. Let's go both. The first period was really evenly matched. Yeah. Um, and it was super exciting. Lots of hits on the boards because checking is allowed. Obviously, there's it, it's not full checking like in the NHL, but checking right. to some degree is allowed. Um, and there was a scuffle, I think, at one point, like almost a fight. Um, they obviously don't let them fight, um, but they let them like get all up in each other. It's very exciting. Uh, but the the second two periods, I mean, Minnesota just dominated. Boston couldn't get the puck in their end. They were out of gas. They were just gassed. Um, so that w didn't make it as exciting. But for me, watching women or men play, like I have just a great of time watching because to me, I just love the sport as a whole. Like I think I would probably love watching roller hockey too. Just like I love that energy and the excitement and everything that comes along with it. So if you love hockey, I, I don't I think you will love it watching women. I don't know that it's, you know, if you love the sport and you love just like the energy that goes out on the ice, like how could you not be entertained? I mean, I was right. very entertained. Yeah. Oh, okay. good. That's all that matters then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going to be even better next season, huge, uh, draft numbers, like people declaring for the draft. I saw that today. Yeah. Yeah. That's happening today. The, um, the, the other interesting thing, and I talked about it in my solo episode last week is that the challenge the league is facing right now is that they don't have a development league, right? There's no ECHL, there's no AHL, there's no FP, whatever. There's none of that. They don't have that. And it's going to force a lot of players into retirement because what is their other option? You're going to go play Whoa. at a high level in college and then you don't get drafted, but you want to stay in shape. So what you're going to go fucking play beer league. Like, no, yeah, you can't compete and stay at your top game. I mean, I would say it's, it's almost, I, I think I do agree with college being that minor league system because it's almost like football. Like you either you either make it out of college or you don't. Like it's very hard for collegiate football players to make it to the NFL. Well, Some I'm... of them grind it out and play arena football league or they go up to Canada right. and like, you know, you, you find a way if you really want it for another year or two. But two years out of college, if you're not making the PWHL, I don't know if you're going to be making it. Well, true, but also like there's nowhere else to go. True. There's nowhere else to keep playing. So like, and there's only five spots. Like in the in the NFL, you've got a, a thirty two teams. I don't even know how many teams are in the NFL anymore. But like, you've got a lot more. So maybe maybe do roster expansions. So they have like an alternate list. So they, yeah. they do, so they can actually carry like more, right? Because there isn't an AHL to go put the players down into. 
So they're allowed to carry like an, a certain amount of extended roster to be able to pull people up and down. But like, there's nothing keeping that momentum going and allowing people to develop more, right? Because yeah. like, there's guys who get drafted in the NHL and they get immediately sent down into the AHL and they have the opportunity to potentially make it and they can still play at a really high level. Yeah. The women don't have that. Like you don't have anywhere else to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's so we're, we're in the early stages of making this league work. We're not getting a minor league team anytime soon for women. Exactly. But that's yeah. something they're working on hard to find either like some kind of temp temporary something or another that's a big task on their to-do list in the off season to find well those three on three leagues they said they women would be allowed into that so that's that's a way to stay sharp i yeah. mean you got to be darn good to make it you know so yeah it's hard though it's like does the players association allow that are they going to allow them are the how different are the rules what's the liability for the players if something happens yeah i don't know i don't know those answers with like things way above uh, our pay grade way above our pay grade <laughs> but uh it was incredible so yep uh the draft is today and the other exciting thing andy was in august i read this but of course there isn't any press on social media anywhere which makes me crazy and then i start second guessing myself like did i not read the facts correct but they're coming out with the logos and the team names in august all right yeah i saw that i saw that report from you oh good well hopefully yeah. i'm right and hopefully yeah. the other people who reported it online in their written articles for real establishments are accurate <laughs> but yeah there's like nobody's like we're like missing some of these pieces here, so. Yeah, well, at the end of our docket, because I noticed this wasn't on there, let's talk about Utah, speaking of naming teams. Yeah. Because with some of the, the women's, they haven't like, we don't know where the, what direction they're going at no. all. Uh, nor do we know color schemes, right? Because they're wiping the slate clean. So we can yeah. we can talk about, you. do you want to talk about Utah now or do you want to wait? Do it. Okay. Let's do it. I love the color scheme of the powder blue, and the black love it i'm actually like a minority in terms of liking utah hockey club you like that like change it up a little bit no i do not like venom i do not like that is not a it no venom is no uh mammoth is no the yeti's blizzard? fine blizzard and yeti blizzard's okay <laughs> you're all on board on blizzard huh i'm all but, on the blizzard or yetis i'm in it i see i don't know i like i feel like utah like and i'm i'm old school so it's really weird for this to come out of my mouth but like i feel like it'd be a good change of pace but florida already took the soccer style jersey so like that's the florida hockey club would be like the perfect thing for their jersey yeah but like they're, we're not foot, we're not f football soccer, you know. Yeah, but that's what it reminds we, me of. If we don't go that route, I would I would take Yeti Blizzard. I'm okay with. I don't like Venom. I don't like Mammoth. I think there's one other one. Okay, and then here's the other confusing thing that I saw though. They said that they are going with Utah Hockey Club this season. Might be a dog and pony show. Really. I mean, they're creating discussions or creating conversations about it. Like they might just create the logo. They probably have a third party working on logos right now for all six of those names. Of, yeah, or, of course. Or two, because they're probably, um, I heard a story. I can't remember you what. You tell me this story while I look up the other name. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what team it was, but somebody, and this was within the past 20 years. Whoever they, whoever the owner was, they're like, let's put up a poll. And the poll went up. The team name was voted by the fans, but the owner wanted the, this X team name, the team that lost. So they put up a fake poll 
And they're like, yeah, it's the so-and-sos. And here's the logos and all that. Because the owner wanted it. He just wanted to make a poll for fans. I don't remember which team that was either. So that's something else for you to look at. Was up. it in the NHL? It was, a, it was a major four sport. Okay. The other name was Outlaws. That's Which is ridiculous. No. Like, get a cowboy. That's, that's and like, like EA Sports create a team name. The Outlaws. <laughs> Like that's, does, like, that's, that's on a Thursday night. You go to your local hockey rink at midnight and the outlaws are playing somebody. It's like, no, it's not a, it's not an NHL team name. Okay. Well then let me ask you this. Do you like the name, the Kraken? Um, it's okay. grown on me. When I first heard it, I was like, what? See. But like, I'm kind of like, I'm coming around on it. Like I'm not, I don't hate it. I never hated it. I was always just like, like if I was cartoon character, there was a question mark above my head when it was announced. Um, the Golden Knights, I liked. Um, what's a new? What was the, what's been the newest team besides the Golden Knights? That was the first of the most recent expansion. Yeah. Would've so it would have been, been that, we would have been dating back to the Predators and the mm -hmm. Blue Jackets then. The Blue Jackets. Yeah. <laughs> We're going civil war, and then their and then their mascot was a stinger. So there's a stinger reference for you. Yeah. Then their I mean, mascot like, was a random bee. It's just like we could go if we like the Oilers. Well, they that, have. Edmonton, and that's Edmonton, ferocious, Edmonton oil like oil country. well. No. Edmonton like that's was a big oil country. Yeah, I no, I understand that, but like. That has that does not correlate if you like really think about it to any kind of sports scary name. Kings is not a scary name. No. Ducks. But that's the ducks for sure not. Cute little ducklings running across the street. What, 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 what? <laughs> um speaking of that, dude. Where this was also news that was buried. The Ducks and the Kings are getting new jerseys and I new logos. That. So I feel like it's not really going to be new logos, though. It's just going to it's almost going to be reverse retro resurrected is kind of what I'm getting a sense of, which the Ducks have been transitioning into. Like they've they've got the all orange uh, 1993 look now. Mm -hmm. Um and then the Kings, I'd love to see them go back to the Gretzky jerseys. But, That's but, what I think but you're doing. My favorite Kings jersey is just the crown mm -hmm. when they did the purple and gold, like, back in the day. Mm -hmm. like, like, do that, that again. Modernize it a little bit. Those are my favorite Kings jerseys. I love the purple. See, I like that sleek black and silver and white look. Yeah. Because that's the... It's one of the only teams that has that, the black, like black and white. Yeah, actually you which, are right. Which I think is unique and different. And so I like that element, but I don't yeah. know, I guess. Yeah, I was shocked to see that that news come out. I was like, wait, what, wait a second. Like, where was this buried in the, in the news, in the hockey world? And like. What, why aren't these influencers on social media talking about it? You know, like where, where's the inside scoop? On it's, the up, things that... it's up to us, Ray Ray. Yes. The House of Hockey podcast. We will carry this burden for the world. Spreading the good word of the league on behalf yes. of the NHL and the PWHL. The, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really care about either of those teams getting a, like an, a revamp of their logo because it's not my team. So I have no dog in that fight at all whatsoever. Um, but I guess the Ducks, they're bringing back more of the Mighty Duck logo. and they're, But it's still going to be predominantly, like orange will still be a predominant color. Yeah, it'll be the duck mask with the hockey sticks. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was their third the past few years. I don't know. I mean, they're going to just get a lot of shit for that. You know, because it's like the movie. It's like a little kid. It's like the kids. It's like the movie. Everybody loves it, though. It's much better than the D, the web D that they have. I don't know. I'm. I would be a little more inclined for the D. Yeah. Can we clip that? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Not. You know what I'm saying. Like, just. 
No. Next topic. <laughs> Next topic. Okay, so we don't agree on the Utah thing, which is fine, which is obviously, of course, we don't because, you know. You know, I will hang on. Let me backtrack real quick. It irritates me that people love the 90s stuff now, but when it first came out, they hated it. Like everybody hated the eggplant color for the ducks. I always liked it. And there you the go Arizona, again. <laughs> Fucking the, eggplant the Arizona, peas, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> the um, Arizona coyotes. Yeah. The Picasso coyote. Everybody hated it in the in the late nineties. I actually really liked it. And then they bring it back, and everyone's like, "Oh, where was this?" Because you hated it, people. Okay, yeah. I'm, rant over. You know. Uh. Okay, I want to run something by you. The okay. uh, combine, the NHL comp. We're of course, we're of course going to talk about um, the Stanley Cup final that's happening. But give us a minute. We'll, we're going to get there. We've got other f- pressing things to discuss. Much apparently. more. <laughs> so the combine, the scouting combine, is happening, and there are rumored questions that they ask the the players the that they're uh, scouting right like all the teams yeah. do if you don't know they do sit down interviews with the prospects and they ask them typically they ask them some really b- bizarre off the wall questions and these are some of the questions that have been asked teams have not been identified who's asking this but i'm going to ask you these questions andy Okay. As if you were uh, at the NHL scouting combine and we're playing. So one of the questions is, what's your Snapchat score? Oh, I don't even know. But I'd you have, have Snapchat, look. right? I do. I'd have to look it up. It's, I used to like know it like back when Snapchat came out. I don't even know. I'm not even. So no like point. a high score, though, would mean you're on there a lot. Mine's pretty low. But is that how it works? Because I had to delete it because of the D. So <laughs> that I was receiving. The, the web D, the Ducks fans were sending you stuff? Okay. They were. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, that... I, I guess low. Okay. You guess low. Yeah. <laughs> Which animal would you be and why? Uh, grizzly bear. Because it is pretty adapt to most climates except for really warm weather um and it's ferocious it can hunt the only thing that really can take it down is a hunter's bullet or a polar bear okay i guess that would be a good answer i don't know what the point of these questions are this one's good what's your uber rating so utah actually asked this to players i read that on social media Mine's like a four point like nine six or something, four point nine seven. Mm-hmm. I think somebody gave me a low rating one time to take me off that five star rating because like I told them a route to go and they're like, No, the GPS take me this way. I'm like, but it's faster to go this way. And then he kept going his route and I was like, All right. So I guess he didn't like me mouthing off, so he gave me a four. Yeah, but like customers always right. Yeah, so I should have a five star rating. You should. I think yeah. I have like a 4.89 because I. Ooh, that means you mouth off twice. That's not my fault. You know whose fault that is? Never your fault. It's Listen, I will cop to my mistakes. Like, I will. I'm always in the car. Like, I'm like, is it okay if I drink my water in your car? Like, I am super f- nice. And I'm like, is it okay if I eat my snack bar in your car? Like, <laughs> I ask because I don't want my Uber rating to go down. I'm just but teasing. My, of course, is going to make me update the fucking app. To, I can't see what I can't. I can't today. Nothing is working right. No. <sighs> so my high school bestie came to visit me when I lived in LA and she got shamammered and she no. brought a bottle of beer in the uber on the way home and then she fell asleep in the back seat and she wouldn't get out of the car when we got home and so and to boot i was like 
get out of the fucking car. I'm like, you're going to ruin my Uber rating. I'm like, you're going to give me a bad rating. You need to get out of the car. And she was like, passed out on the back seat. Really? I'm, oh my God. It was. And then the next morning, she didn't remember. Yeah. yeah. So I have a good life hack for you. <laughs> so whenever I go out with groups of friends and we all Uber, I'll say, hey, I'll take the Uber there, but I'm not taking the Uber back. Because it's always messier on the way back. Always. So good life hack. And everybody's always like, like when, once you get to the end of the night, people are more generous. And I'll be like, well, I got the Uber here. Who's getting it? Yep. So we'll, we'll it. hack to keep that rating up in case, somebody, in case somebody is uh, a little belligerent. Well, luckily, I'm, I'm not Ubering in that capacity anymore. It's mostly to and from an airport. And so. Well, it probably takes about an hour to get an Uber to your place now, right? We don't have Uber where I live. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Even worse. I mean, I don't, I have never tried it because like it, I would have to schedule it and they'd probably cancel and there's just yeah. not enough need for it where I live. But okay. Next question. If you were being drafted into war, would you be a sniper, a pilot or a medic? Um, God, what a question. Sniper. Probably a medic just to help people. You could you, you could handle like all of that. Oh, that's true. Like an arm blown off? No, I probably couldn't. So let's erase that. I had good intentions to start. <laughs> you sure did. I couldn't handle that though. I'd probably have to be a sniper. You could handle killing somebody? I mean, I'm gonna get killed if I'm a pilot. Like how what easy do you mean is you're gonna get killed if you're a pilot? The pilot's the safest option. It's the biggest target. You got guns on the on the plane. It's so easy to take down a, a, a chopper or anything. I'll take sniper. I'm a lot of a practice pilot. on a lot of practice on my childhood playing first person shooters. A lot of practice. Okay. I'll be fine. How would this one is so stupid? I would be like, I'm literally not answering your question. How would you describe the color blue? Um, the best of all the colors. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, I won't even answer. That's tough. Like, that's blue. a tough one. Yeah. It's like the color blue. You could. Yeah. That's describing. I was watching something funny the other day. <laughs> Have you ever seen Louder Milk on Netflix? No. It's a pretty funny show. I strongly, it's my show of the week. I should, I suggest, um, I think it was on that show. They're like, that's like describing a rainbow to a blind person. You just can't do it. It's purple, blue, yellow, <laughs> pink. Yeah. I don't know what any of that means. Um, that's, uh, those were the draft questions. That was all. I just thought it would be fun to that's see uh, yeah. how we would Tough answer. Ones. Some of those. I'm like, I'm sure they're doing it just as, it feels like, how I guess Google does that. If you try to work at Google, they ask you all kinds of bizarre questions. And then they ask you to like do weird problem solving and comprehensive things. And anyway, mm. no, thank you. I guess it's very rigorous trying to get a job at Google. <laughs> I'm sure those people have to describe blue as well. You know, oh boy, good luck. I want to know their answer. It says something about their way their brain works, I guess. And like, they're playing hockey and like, all we need to know is if they're a team player. So like, yeah. Yeah, those questions. Yeah, we, we would be any of them, the pilot, the medic or the the sniper. Because we're part play of the- play on your hockey team. Whatever one you want me to be, I'm a team player. I'd be happy to play all the positions. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're drafted, Rachel. <laughs> so over in the NHL, uh, you know, the Stanley Cup Finals happening. Yeah. We've got the Florida Panthers back in the final for the second straight season, just chomping at the bit to win Lord Stanley because they were so upset about losing last year. And we've got the Edmonton Oilers, of course, who are in the final for the first time in 20 some, 15, 20 some years. Been a while. Yeah. Been a while. How are you feeling about this matchup? What are, who are you rooting for? Uh, I'm not really rooting for anybody. Um, I'll 
take a tip of it because I like I love Connor McDavid so much, but just the rest of the Oilers cast, like I just there's not much more that I like out of that team. I mean, I like Sam Carrick. Um, mm-hmm. I personally worked with him for a few years, so really respect him. But outside of that, they 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 take players that nobody wants anything to do with. Vander Kane, gambling problems, problems with your ex wife or wife, whatever she is, come aboard. Corey Perry, problems in Chicago, come aboard. Yeah. We'll take anybody at a chance to win. So that's that's the reason why I don't want to intend to win. So I'll you take that. Corey Perry would answer that question as sniper for sure. Oh He's yeah. Like, I got no problem killing anybody. <laughs> So I'll take the cats and I and I honestly think it's gonna be I said cats in five before this started. I think the Oilers can squeak one out mm-hmm. with McDavid and Dry Sidle, but I just don't think they have if we're and I said this against Dallas. I don't think goaltender versus goaltender. I think Bobrovsky is the guy. Um, but I said that with Ottinger and Skinner. So yeah. I was wrong there. I mean, in the words of the kid who's now famous from Florida for his like sh- shirtless cheering behind the bench, if oh, you have seen kid, the yeah. clip, he was like, "We got Bob." <laughs> you know, we got Bob. So h- who could argue with that? I so like, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you an amusing uh, thing to look up when we're done. I'm not <laughs> sure you've heard. Do you know who Jay Onright is? So he does. Yeah. T- he does Sports Center up in Canada. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. He's hilarious. Uh, the world needs him. Uh, he did this bit like this is like 15, 10 years ago where Sergei Bobrovsky, he would just yell his name like he'd be off camera and you just hear like Bobrovsky. So he started this bit where he'd be like, Bobrovsky, you're off the case. Go look it up. It's really, really funny. OK. Yeah. Well, Florida's got Bob, and I have faith in Bob and Florida. Okay. Yeah. So it. we agree. Well, how many games do you think, though? Uh, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I could see five. I could yeah. see five. <laughs> I don't think seven. I don't think seven. I don't think seven either. Well, I wanted to go six or more just for the sport because, I, I don't know, I've been – Apparently, the NBA Finals fallen on its face. I don't really pay much attention. I'm just you know. regurgitating what I've seen on social. I mean, yeah, I don't watch basketball. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, thank you. The Do you think the long distance, the travel between this final will be taxing, right? So this is a record-breaking commute between the two cities, to go, you know, the back and forth for the games is 2,500 miles. It's going to get tough if the series extends for sure. Like once you do a game in Edmonton, fly to Florida, have a game, fly to Edmonton, like Mm -hmm. games, game six and seven, if they're such a thing are going to be, I don't know, it's going to hit them. And there's only a day off, right? There's only one day travel. I think so. Yeah, that's tough. Like, and it's going to be even more tough for like people covering. Like, can you imagine? Because oh, they yeah. get they get the luxury of a charter. Some people who are covering this are going to have to have a layover in like Chicago or Denver, or maybe it, even two layovers. It happened in um, the conference final, uh, going to Dallas. Um, good friend of the podcast, Kenny Albert and his crew and all the TNT crew. Uh, it took like something crazy. They got stuck in Canada one day and then they had a layover. It took like over 12 hours to get to oh. or from Dallas to, to just go go back the next day to start broadcasting again or whatever. Yeah. It was like ridiculous. So, I mean, harder on the broadcasters for sure. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, like, honestly, like, in travel, like, I, I, I've made comments before. I'm not even playing and I'm exhausted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, I wonder if just, like, if playing, like, getting up and getting going and doing something actually helps you, like, shake loose of the travel. Like, more those morning quick skates and then you shut it down for an app and maybe that helps. Yeah. I, mean, I think they... I mentioned this on the podcast before, but did you know that morning skates used to be a booze check? Really? 
Yep. See if yeah, they were back. hungover? Yeah, back or sweat, just sweat it out. Ah. Because guys would go out the night before, like they'd get into like, you know, let's say the Chicago Blackhawks flying to New York City. Where are they going to go to bed in the 80s and 90s? Are they going to go to bed at 9 o'clock? No. So morning skates used to be, all right, let's sweat it out, boys. Let's sweat it out. And then they'd go huh. take a nap. And then they'd get ready for the game. Like that actually worked. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't just like sweat out the cocaine from the night before. It's like, hey, we're talking booze. This is a, a oh, right. 13 show. Yeah, because that's all they were. They're just drinking those. <laughs> Miller lights, you know, just pounding the Miller lights. And uh, yeah, you can sweat that out. Maybe <laughs> back on the ice. I don't know. Either way. Uh, I did not know that. And I'm yep. sure it is still applicable in a lot of ways today. And yep. I'm sure it helps. Not as frequent though. I will definitely say that. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and not in the Stanley cup final. Like you, no. I mean, no. Unless you have like a problem or it's your way to like, I mean, we've heard the stories like sometimes like a guy, the guys in the playoffs just need to burn off like a night and who, who, which player was it? I don't remember the notable player who's now retired, but like suggested to somebody because they were having a really bad stretch, like took him out, got him completely shit faced and then like played phenomenally, like just needed to like blow off the steam. So like there's yeah. a time and a place for it for sure. Agreed. If that's what you need, you know, especially if you're trying to win a cup, like we got to just do what we got to do, you know? Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to get your thoughts on is superstitions. Okay. Holy Connor McDavid, Jesus Christ, is he superstitious? He wore the same suit. I saw that. Walk in. And then in a press conference, he even referred to my gods, the hockey gods. I have prayed to them over this very candle before and prayed for things to happen to the hockey gods for good things to happen. And he was like, Yeah, I guess the hockey gods just weren't on our side. I'm like, He's admitting he's. He's really in it. He's like in one. And then on the flip side, so the Panthers, it was great. Their coach um, told uh, Barkov not to touch the Prince of Wales trophy. Yeah. The previous year, they touched it. And they were like, it's fine. We don't believe in any of this. And then they lost last year. And the coach like grabs him by the, it's like, don't touch the cock, don't. And like, they like, he looked terrified when he went out there and like the picture, they're like, they're like not even smiling because they're just like so terrified to be anywhere near it. It was, it was really funny. Maurice. I thought that was funny. That was really good. Just to give him the quick, like, hey, we're not doing it this time around. Thing. <laughs> that was really funny. I've heard Paul Maurice is a really good character. His pressers are pretty entertaining. Um, yeah. But I was interested. So, then I looked up to see if the Oilers touched the uh, Clarence Campbell Bowl, and they did not either. But I don't remember on that side last year if Vegas touched it. Do you remember? I don't. It's generally a thing, though. Like, you generally shouldn't touch it. Yeah, but some teams, then there was, like, this whole thing because Tampa touched their trophy, and then they went on to win. And, like, some teams are like, we don't believe in it. We won our yeah. trophy. We get to touch it. Yeah. I, I would. would. Yeah. Just like just like you also don't touch the Stanley Cup. No. Okay, I have a bone to pick with the hockey Illuminati guy. He's this Instagram influencer who talks hockey. And he's very funny. And we've had him on this podcast. He was with the cup and yeah. was legit touching it. And like, look at, they misspelled this name and look whose name is misspelled here and he was like physically touching it and i was getting such anxiety watching him do this i was like how do you so confidently touch something that you don't deserve to touch period like even if my team won again like in my lifetime and i had the opportunity to touch the cup i would have a moral conflict like yeah. i didn't do anything to win this and it's like such a prize thing. So I was like, I wanted to just be like, 
slap his hand away. Like, don't. Why? Who are you? Why? Well, you're a fan, though. It's fine, though, if you're a fan. That's a player superstition. No. I'd be okay if you touched it. Like, no. It's They're your, it's your it. own, it's your own thing. I feel. Oh, it's a Rachel problem. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it's your own. Everybody's, it's everybody's own thing. Like, yeah. Like, it's a player thing. Yes. Like, it's a player psychological thing. Like, you're, you're not competing for it. So, to me, I feel like it's, it's out the window. No. Now, if there was, if there was a podcaster cup, then yes, do not touch it until you win it, Ray Ray. Which we all know Ray is never winning any awards for anything. <laughs> I don't even have a fake award like those tellies from one of my days in television, you know, where people are like, oh, yeah. oh I have 20 tellies. I'm like, great. Well, let's get some awards going at the end of the season. <laughs> what the fuck are we winning an award the, for? The right? HOH uh, podcast of the year. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll pick an episode <laughs> and it'll be the episode of the year and you can win it. It'll be like the, uh, what's the office awards? From the show The Office. I, I didn't watch it to that degree, so uh, okay. I don't know. Like, what would we even win for? Best pot, pe- best episode of the year. Yeah, right here. Bring up to the podium. Ray Ray. Thanks, guys. I can't. I can't even imagine. Anyway, we're not, we're not winning anything here. Uh, just winning your... All of you, all of you who listen, just winning your five star reviews is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> just sharing the podcast every once in a while, telling people about it that that would be enough for me. I would never need an award if that happened, um, which I know a lot of you do. The touching of the cup, I don't think I, I have a hard time with it. I just don't think fans. Especially if it's not your team. Phil Pritchard, the keeper of the cup, did like this whole interview with ESPN before because they're covering the final, which we know how I feel about that. But he was like, you don't just, not just anybody gets to touch the cup. And it's like, it's a special thing. And I just respect it too much, probably. Fair enough. Anyway. That's what I got on that. I think we covered it all. Oh, no, we didn't. The last thing. I'm sorry. I never place bets. Okay. Oh. I don't gamble. Except at the beginning of this season when Breezy and I spent $5 in Vegas to bet on who would win the Stanley Cup this year. Both of us lost. She picked the Devils, I think. And I picked Vegas, which I at least had a chance. Yeah. Um, and it was $5 and it was for entertainment of the podcast, but I also placed a bet with a former guest of the podcast, Kevin Pozo. He's a retired player and he would not stop yammering on to me about how Adam Fantilli was such a better prospect than Connor Bedard. And he was like, I'm going to place a friendly bet with you. That Fantilli will have more points at the end of the season than Bedard. And I was like, you're on. And guess who won? And both of them were, I won. But both of them were injured too, by the way, this season. I was going to say, did you go points per game? No, we did all overall points. Okay. And I clearly won. And I (laughs) knew I was going to be right. And so I took, that's the only reason why I took the bet. Because I was like, Unless he gets injured and then fine, you know, then I wouldn't be butthurt about it because, like, he got injured. Yeah. So the loser had to come on the podcast and say that the other player was the better player on record. And so here, here it is. Okay. Hey, everybody. Kevin Pozo here, uh, former pro hockey player and previous guest of Ray Ray's House of Hockey. Uh, At the beginning of the season, the NHL season, that is, we made a bet. I thought uh, Fantilli was the better player. She obviously thought Bedard was a better player. And I lost that bet. So I will have to admit, unwillingly, but I own up to losing a bet. Um, Bedard is the better player. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs> so I won a bet. Good for you. 
Do you know what? Maybe this is the start of me winning awards for this podcast, Andy. All right. Make up one now. First, you win a bet. <laughs> it's the counter Bedard award. You know, first you win a bet, then you uh, then you win awards for the podcast. All right. That's what happened. Well, so, should we make uh, a bet? Should we make a bet to close out this episode then? We don't really, we haven't really gone head to head on anything in, in this episode though. So just um, the team names. We could bet who's going to win, uh, what the name of uh, Utah is going to be. Well, we know this season they're going with the hockey club, but beyond yeah. that. I'd rather do like a, oh, like, okay, hang on. Um, let's take it out of the Stanley Cup final. Is Is there any, there's got to be something we can do here. Who's got more goalies? Who's got more saves? Like, no, I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it. We'll do something for next year. All right. I'm, you know what? Let me ride high on my one bet I've ever I'll let you, I'll let you enjoy the moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get a tradition going that we can start getting awards going. Okay. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, ha we'll have to do it with the draft at the beginning of next season. Yes, like, maybe we, we pick will. a draft player. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that's you a good know, idea. Who's going to be the better of the season, you know? deal anyway i just i never felt so good hearing words told to you that you were right it's like <laughs> the best feeling it could, and you know what i'm never gonna feel it again so whenever i'm down which is all the time play I'm the gonna, recording just play the recording there you go <laughs> anyway thanks for being here andy no thank you see you later Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.